It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is Frank Ilfman, film composer who has done several projects such as Big Bad Wolves, Bitter Seeds, and The Intruder. Hello. Hi, how are you doing, man? What's going on right now with you? Um, right now, I'm uh, gearing up to go to the uh, Saturn Award, which is probably in about two or three hours. We're being nominated with Big Bad Wolf for Best Music and um, Best International Movie. We're just kind of having a few shots, and then we're heading the red carpet. Well, give us a little information about this film, those who haven't seen it yet, or even heard of it. Uh, mm. uh, Big Bad Wolf is basically it's an Israeli movie that was, was done last early in the year, and basically... It's uh, it's kind of like a thriller, dark comedy with a very kind of uh, gruesome twist. It's uh, basically about a serial killer who um, get abducted by a, the father of a child that he um, kidnapped and uh, raped and killed, a policeman who wants vengeance. And it, it's kind of like a very small ensemble, very intense movie, but very funny at the same time. How did you get involved with this project? Um, I met I met Aaron uh, Kashalis and the Papashuda, the directors. I actually met them when I scored their first movie, uh, Rabies, um, which was like a rescue job. So I met them during that period, and then once we finished Rabies, uh, we then start talking about the next one, which was Big Bad Wolves, and then we've done another one, which is ABC of Death Two. So we have a very good uh, working relationship. Nice. You ever won any awards uh, compared to this one in the past? What, for the Saturn? Yeah, or any in general. Um, yeah, I mean, I won, um, I was nominated for the Genie Awards, I was nominated for the Israeli Film Academy, I won the Israeli Film Academy, um, and uh, I won the Seaches Jury Mention for Best Music. Uh, I don't know if that, I don't think that there's been any, you know, greater honor than to be up for, like, you know, the Saturn Award as it's, like, the most recognizable for, um, you know, genre movies. Uh, within sci-fi action, uh, thrillers, and, and horror. So it's a, it's a great honor to be nominated. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you never know where it's going to come from. And uh, it, we were quite surprised when Magnolia put us for the award. And, you know, the Academy just loved it. And the, the people who voting and, and went to the screenings and saw the movie, um, and they just decided, it, you know, it deserves nomination. And, you know, and the music is, is in a, you know, it's in the major categories. You know, it's up against uh, John Williams, The Book Thief, uh, Brian Towers, Iron Man, uh, Howard Short, The Dissolution of Smog, and uh, Danny Elfman. Uh, I think it's all the great. So, you know, it's just been a great honor, you know, to be recognized in that genre. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, is it better to put your music in the foreign markets first? In the foreign markets? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. I think, I think again, it's, it's like you never know. You know, you do a movie, you never think, okay, that movie is the one that's going to do it or, or such. I've done some big movies, both in London a lot, because that's where I'm, I'm currently residing, and then uh, some, you know, movies here in L.A., and they went Break the DVD, even though they had like really good uh, stars. You never, you never, you never kind of know, you know, where it's that's gonna come and what's gonna put you on people's uh, radar. And uh, you know, you always think, oh, this is really good and that's gonna do it. But then it just, you know, kind of flunk and goes to oblivion. So it's just like you know, you do your best with every movie, and then you know, comes a small independent movie, you know, that the directors fought, you know, they, they were kind of like they fought and they they wanted like a And sometimes, sometimes it's actually good to put it in foreign markets in America because you kind of get better feedback in some cases, or at least some would say so. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, I think American movies do go to like foreign markets and they do test screening, uh, you know, or or kind of like they show the movie there first before it's actually opened in the states. I think it varies. 
movies. I mean, again, like with genre movies, you know, I think it's always better to to show it to uh, to the you know genre audience. Certain festivals when you do your your premiere, and it, it's a good indication of how the, the mass audience will then accept the movie. Um, you know, there's lots of good movies which are like horror movies or or you know thrillers and stuff like that. But they you know they 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 go out to cinema and they have a screening of like uh, you know a week or two or three, and then straight into VOD and DVD, and and they might have their success actually in that domain. So it's, I think it's always easier to to see a movie how you know how people. People react to it in a foreign market and then apply it to, to more of your local market. Do you think it's more about releasing uh, as far as getting the product on time or do you think it's all more should be more about quality? Um, well, it's kind of both. I mean, it, it's got to be quality. I mean, it, you know, people today are not stupid. So if you, if you do a movie that's really bad, people will just, you know, people will just wouldn't see it, you know, because there's no point to do a bad movie. So I think if you do a movie, invest in a movie. I mean, again, it could be a low-budget movie. It could be, you know, uh, there's a lot of amazing independent movies today. I mean, uh, you know, their budget could be like a hundred thousand or two hundred, you know, not a hundred million. Where they're really good movies. They're, you know, they might be unknown actors, but they're really good. They're, you know, the performance is good. Again, everything is great, and they're small movies, and they just work. Again, it may, you know, it may apply to a smaller audience, maybe, but. Because people see that, that's something that will go over, you know, from person to person and say, oh, you got to go and watch this movie, you got to, you know, download this movie or watch it on VOD or such, and, you know, that movie will get the recognition it deserves, and all of a sudden it, you know, turns into a success. I think, it, you know, again, it depends, it's all very different market, but I think, you know, especially with, with so much blockbusters, they always have certain dates, so if you got like a good you know, a good movie, uh, independent or even a decent budget. Um, if you know you got, you know, Transformers and you got, you know, Avengers coming out or something like that, sticking that movie in that in that month or period is, is would be a wrong decision because there's no way you're going to compete with with the, with them and with the amount of publicity that they bombard, you know, the audience with. So, you know, I think it's a combination of, you know, quality and timing. It's like more of the product but then you see a lot of the films so you see these big budget films for the most part just really not being so good even if it is a popular franchise or, or a potential good product it's just the fact that it's pushed out way too early or way too quickly and it's just kind of sloppy even though it may look nice yeah I mean it's something you get on any you know you get it with your you know you get it with your Mac software as well and, and such you know they always push things sometimes too soon and they iron a lot of the bugs for instance later on you know once people use them so it's, it's almost like a side you know test animals doing the stuff you know the work for you in, instead of trying to, to clean things so again you know it's because you know it's supply and demand and there's a lot of competition and they, they try to be the first with, to come out with the movie out and you know sometimes it's it, you know it backfires you know is it best to have more motion and less momentum in scoring no not really it depends i mean slow music is you know in, in its core it's basically it's used to manipulate the audience as to what they want you to feel and, and such and you know th there's movies where you can put emotions or put a lot of emotions but then you can go overboard with your emotion and then you you know what it does it will just basically it will disconnect the audience the audience wouldn't bite into that fake emotion you know it's, it's always a thin line you know you it's like if you watch a, a movie today that has these kind of really really cheesy violins where the, you know the, the, the couple starts to kiss or she runs to him you know the audience goes today like oh come on you know it's like because i think we're we we became more cynical these days of things if if there's you know if we push it over the top we're you know, that you know that cynical you know christy and then we, we go like ah oh, yeah yeah whatever yeah yeah she runs to him sure yeah let's see it in real life you know, I don't think you can hit too much emotion. I think emotions are very good, but I think within the content. As for momentum, um, you know, again, it's, 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 it's the same thing. You know, sometimes you can have it too much, and then, you know, like in horrors, you know, you can have menacing music, but then you might preempt, you know, the strike, you, fright, you know, you preempt the, the fright. So you kind of lost that momentum because you were going for it way too soon. You know, they're all, they're all you know, they're all fine balances about how you would use a score in a movie. Sometimes it's not up to the composer, it's, it's sometimes, or even most of the time, it's how, you know, the director wants it and, you know, you can say I think it's wrong or you can 
try and have a discussion about it, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's up to the director how the music would be used and how much and in what way. Yeah, and how film is rapidly changing the techniques as well as the graphic view and everything. Do you think that people kind of lost the movement from the score itself in films? I mean, it's, it's I mean, again, with the blockbusters, you have a lot of, you know, especially with those who are action-oriented in movies, you have, like, uh, a lot of, like, explosions. You have a lot of sound hitting you, you know, left and right, especially with the surround or with the IMAX, like, you know, double or triple the amount. So when you got your score going, even though your score, say, would be big and bombastic, most time it will be it will be buried under all the effects. Very few movies, you've got the score actually in front of the effects. I mean... Gravity is, is a great idea where they came up with the idea of, of having the score more than the sound, especially as there's no sound in space. So, you know, it, it depends, but I think these days there's so much sound in cinema. When you, got, you can have a very big orchestra and, and be very bombastic with the score, but most of it will be buried. You, if, I don't know if you watched, if you saw the, the new incarnation of Godzilla. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's a good movie. It's a, you know, it's a fun time movie. Yeah. Um, it's very loud, there's loads of effects, and there's a tremendous amount of score which is loud, but you, you know, which is, and it's great, it's a great score by the flat, but most of the time in the movies, especially when you have the monsters fighting and stuff, you know, you don't hear any of the score very, very briefly because there's so much sound. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's sad in one, one way as, as a composer where you say, oh, I want people to hear my music, but, you know, at the end of the day, we all serve a movie, and, and if the movie benefits more from having sound and, and you know, effects, then you would notice the score. Um, it's, it's for the best of the movie. I think any movie that you notice the score because the score is there and you don't notice the movie, then the score didn't serve the purpose, because the whole idea of the score is to promote you know, to, to, to help the movie, the pace, and then the emotion. Yeah, and in a lot of cases, there's a more of a effect rather than cause instead of having cause and effect when it comes to the scoring. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's very much the same, yeah. yeah. Well, when you compose, what, what do you intend to, what imprint do you intend to leave for the listeners when, when they hear your music in a film? When, I mean, when I score a movie, I don't, I don't really think about the audience. Like I don't think about it as a, I don't think about it as a self-contained score because um, I write it to picture. I don't write it as as a listening experience track or or such. I mean those kind of things you know you kind of do after when you release a soundtrack. So you would then did re-edit your score, uh, reshift the parts. You know you would you would create a listening experience when you listen to the score uh, without the movie. But when I when I actually sit down in the studio to to compose the music, I think about the movie, um, what we want to convey to the audience, what we want the audience to feel, or or how you know how the action is on on screen. Uh, but I don't I don't take I don't think oh I, the audience would love if I if I you know play with the violin and the surround because you can't because there's effects there's other elements there that would, would then when you go to the dub they'll say. Why, why is this here? We can't use it. We're going to drop it. So I don't take consideration, you know, how people would react to the score. I take into consideration how people react to the, scene, to the, to the film and how, and how would they react when this music is on that scene, if that's what we want to achieve for that scene. Yeah, it's just like the actors. You have to really make it work, just like the score and everything. It's a big formula that you really have to be careful doing because you know the slightest movement can can like throw off the scene that, that you're listening to music to because it'd be either too high or too low or just kind of what make it would sound like cut off it, it can be a very kind of a tricky way to do it because you're you're watching the scene and you really want to be captivated by this scene it's, and when you when you go out and buy the soundtrack you want to listen to that song it's like oh wow this is came from this film even if you don't have the film and just you know be captivated by that moment mo makes you want to go watch the movie or we'll go buy the movie um yeah i mean uh, you know today it's very different like you you would have like today you, you have film scores that's been released prior to the movie uh in certain cases you know and it's great because if you listen to it you go to few then you you know you, you wouldn't go to watch the movie because of the score you know they would release soundtrack today prior to the movie if it's a franchise like you know spider-man or any of you know any of these big big franchise um so you would you know they would release those before where you you know you get your your fan base and they would buy it and talk about the score and then they'll talk about you know what that used in the movie and not and then they would go watch the movie 
you know, everything evolves around the movie, and uh, if, if the movie is good, you know, the score is bad, the movie will still be good, you know? Nobody will say, ah, it's a bad score, but the movie is great. They might, you know, they might say something afterwards, you know, if they've been asked or something, but besides, they won't give the score a time of day. If the, you know, if the movie is bad and the score is fantastic, you know, it wouldn't help the movie. The movie will still flunk, you know? Um, and the score, is, you know, the score wouldn't have so much of a life because the movie wasn't successful. Uh, if the movie is successful and the score is bad, you know, it'll have a bit of life because the movie, again, it will all rise on the movie. So everything depends on the movie. Um, you know, you get lucky and both are great, uh, like Big Bad Wolf, like, uh, you know, like Atonement or, you know, 101 examples. And, you know, both sound pretty well. You know, both have been got their own uh, entity, so the score is successful and it's got its own way to go and, and, you know, direction with awards and soundtrack and releases and stuff. And the movie, the movie keeps on going and, and gets awards and, you know, uh, fan base and such. So, you know, that's the best formula you can, you can hope for, but it doesn't always happen. Do you have a plan to ensure that your work is pretty secured as far as protection goes from other companies mis possibly misusing your work? Um, there's, there isn't really a protection plan that you can do. I mean, you know, you do a score uh, and you record it and, and you know, uh, part of part of the rights for the score is yours. Part of it belongs to the studios or, or your, you know, or my publishers or, or, you know, agents involved or anything like that. If somebody, you know, somebody rips you off or, they, you know, they take they take it as a clip from the soundtrack and they, you know, put it in some, some work or something online, you, and you see it or somebody finds out, uh, you know, usually there is somebody will say, somebody will say, look, you can't use it without permission, you know, you either need to pay or, or get a permission to do it or license or such. You know, sometimes you'll get asked by somebody who, you know, they're doing a short movie and they say, look, I really like your music. I'm sure you're busy and I, you know, we can't afford you and such. Um, or, you know, or if I, I really like to be in, involved in that movie and I don't have the time, but they'll say, look, you know, do you have anything that we can use or that's not, you know, licensed or is, is with, you know, always held by one of the studios? You know, you go, yeah, you know, I, I can I can look at the movie and say, I have these tracks and I have these, you know, these stuff and I can, you know, get get somebody to, you know, edit that for you or something like that. And you can, you know, we then do like a, a, a contract or my publisher or agent do a contract, they, then they can use it and, you know, with the, which everything involved, they can't sell it or anything like that. And it's actually in every composer's contract most of the time would be that you won't be able to, you're not, you know, you, you're not allowed to sell to any first party without consent and stuff like that. Again, depends how, how it's the uh, contract is, but in, in, in many cases that would be the case. So, those kind of things protect you, but there's never 100% that somebody, you know, if somebody wants to rip you off, they'll rip you off, and, you know, if somebody, yeah, if, you know, some, somebody big rips you off and they make a bundle of money, then, yeah, you know, there's people who will take action against it, or, you know, myself. Most times, you know, somebody uses it for some, you know, obscure thing and stuff. I have no, you know, there's, there's, there's no control, like, you, you know, you don't know. I've heard my music being used on TV and stuff without, without me giving consent and stuff. And realized it was like some uh, public thing that they had no money and stuff, and then it was done by some, you know, by some kids that that they're kind of, you know, they want to be filmmakers and stuff. So I said, you know, go for it, you know, use it, you know, it's, um, you know, it helps them in their career as well, and it might help mine, you know, one day when they're going to be doing a big movie and they want me to do the score, so, so why not? Go ahead and probably get any web addresses that that you want to share, any project that you want to just promote or give any advice or anything like that. People can always go to www.frankhilsman.com if you want to listen to more of my scores and stuff. Uh, I'm also on SoundCloud. I so if you just search Frank Hilsman or just Google Frank Hilsman. You know, a great resource for, for film music is, uh, is uh, Film Score Monthly, which is, is it's very easy. If you search Film Score Monthly in Google, you will find it. It's a great resource for soundtrack people and listening to stuff, uh, composer interviews. And again, you know, if they can do it through the website, they have asked, you know, questions or anything like that, I'm more than pleased to try and answer and help. Well, there you go. Film score composer Frank Elfman. Amen, brother.